Hello everyone, my name is Paul Dupuis, I'm the Arts Administration Intern of the Auditorium Theatre of Roosevelt University, and as you can hear, I'm French. So I want to tell you a story. When Will Rogers, the director of the 125th anniversary celebration, asked me in July to dig into the archive department to find some interesting things. See what you can find, let's say in the next uh, 24 hours. Have fun. I was surprisingly very happy. Though I had absolutely no experience at all in gathering old yellow dusty documents. But now I have actually tons of experience. So let me show you the archive room. Actually what they call archives is a lot of paper contained in a lot of boxes. Nothing to be afraid of. Really. So I went through it all and I actually found a lot of cool, cool stuff. I went through all those boxes and now I'm really excited because I'm going to show you the best folders that I found containing the best documents. Best documents because those are the oldest documents that we currently have here in the archives about the auditorium. I'm gonna wear those white gloves that we have to wear because those are really fragile and really old documents. And the oldest is uh, when 23 years old, which is uh, really old. That is the oldest document that we currently have from 1891. That's an old program from the Grand Opera. So 1891 is two years after the, the official opening of the Auditorium Theatre. I'm going to talk about Miss uh, Ima Eames here, featured in Romeo and Juliet. She was uh, obviously playing the role of Juliet. So Ima Eames was actually one of the most uh, successful and, and, and famous soprano at the end of the 19th century. She was really uh, renowned for uh, the beauty of her voice. She was also renowned because she was really young and she played Juliet as she was uh, 26 at the Auditorium Theatre and it was one of her most successful uh, roles. This recording is really really old and so you might think it's not interesting at all. But actually this was the music that the wealthiest and most influential people in the world wanted to hear at the time in a concert venue. They would pay good money for it and they would be really really excited about it as we would be today for like a pop concert. This is also really interesting. This is the, one of the oldest programs of the Apollo Musical Club. The Apollo Musical Club was uh, founded uh, just after the Great Chicago Fire in uh, 1872. The, mu the, the Apollo Musical Club have been performing the Handel's Messiah since uh, 1879. Which means they've been playing it at the Auditorium Theatre for the uh, World Columbian Exposition. They actually also performed on the very opening of the theatre in 1889. And they're going to perform again on December 9th, 2014 for our um, 125th gala celebration. So, Paul Planson that you see here, he was French, obviously. He has, as you can see, a really weird moustache, half uh, Selvold Dali, half Dear Watson. He was really famous, and we believe he performed at the theater is, uh, in 1898. This is Dom Melba. Dom Melba was a famous Australian soprano. Um, she sang with the Metropolitan Opera, um, and she, we believe she performed at the auditorium in uh, 1898. She performed there several times. She was a big star. My friend, that's already the end of our first video live from the archives department of the auditorium. I hope you had a blast and enjoyed that time because I enjoyed it. And I hope you learned a lot of cool stuff about the system of the stars of the 19th century. Next time we'll talk about the auditorium being transformed as a servicemen center during the World War. And we'll talk about the rock era because the auditorium was a temple for rock, pop and soul in the 60s and 70s. Thank you so much for joining us. 
lots of love from the Auditorium Theatre.